Hi folks, Adam here, going to give you the second part of a sample selection tutorial. Uh, the previous one went through some of the terminology and now we're going to talk a little bit about how to apply that in Cancha geometrical software. Um, using uh, Cancha 2.0 uh, and this is a new feature just come out this month in December 2020. So here we are in Cancha, we've got the Bonnie uh, data set open which you can download from our website for free. and um, Basically, uh, got some drilling and block model here, but you'll notice here from the metallurgical samples, haven't chosen any yet, okay? So if I come to the samples area at the top, there's two new icons. There's the representativity report, which was covered in a separate tutorial. And I recommend that you watch that tutorial in conjunction with this one, so you can understand how they work together. And in this tutorial, to keep it short, I'll just talk about how to go through the mechanical parts of choosing the sample uh, how to evaluate the representativity uh, you can see in the in the other tutorial. Okay, so uh, in the previous one we discussed about how the number of samples, the interval length, the focus case, and the principal features are all super important in order to uh, select uh, important criteria for selecting geometrical samples. Uh, and one thing that I didn't mention was the number of uh, which, which drill holes you're going to choose them from. So that's just a logistical thing. You know, we want to represent the deposit, but which drill holes we want to use to be able to choose those samples. Okay. So like I say, you come here to the, the samples area and then you click on here, sample selection. And this wizard comes up. Uh, in this case, I want to choose, let's say, for example, 30 samples. Uh, and I want each sample to be eight meters long. I'd recommend using a little bit shorter than uh, the final width that you want to have. So if you determine through your analysis that you want to have 10 meter long samples, I recommend that in Cancha you put in eight meters, then kind of extend them out a bit to the natural bounds of the uh, geometrical boundaries. Uh, if you go straight up to the, so for example, if it was a 10 meter uh, length that you needed, and if you chose 10 meters, you're gonna, uh, Cancha will end up uh, kind of choosing more heterogeneous uh, samples trying to get that full length that you're looking for. Okay, so these features were already preloaded, and that's because in in, in previous uh, things with uh, Cancha, uh, those were the principal features we're using, so it already loaded them up for us. But let me just show you how we put them there. Uh, you can only use drilling features. You can't use block model or metallurgical sample features. You can only use uh, uh, drilling features. If you wanted to use something from the block model, then you would have to use the lookup from the block model interval. So maybe we can do that. We can use the oxide domain from the block model. Uh, maybe you want to use, whether it's inside or outside the, the final pit, uh, maybe we want to talk about rock type. Okay, so these are mainly categorical things. And then also we want to consider numerical things like, for example, gold grade, iron grade, and sulfur grade, okay? Um, probably want the, the final pit, maybe not so important. I'll put that at the bottom. So these work in order of priority. I think that the, you know, the oxide domain and the rock type probably aren't as important as gold grade. Uh, iron grade is probably the least important. So we're just all organizing here with the arrows as to which is the most important. Okay. All set there. So we've got our features that we want to consider. Uh, if you go more than sort of six or so, then unless you've got a big amount of drilling available, it's unlikely that the drill holes you've got available to take the samples from are going to have all the properties for exactly the right sample every time. So by the time you get to about six or seven different features, the, the quality of the algorithm starts to drop off. And uh, not necessarily because of the problem with the algorithm, more to do with the fact that the samples just don't exist. You're sort of looking for a unicorn. Easy to imagine, doesn't actually exist. Um, focus case, so yeah, so uh, there is another video where I've explained how to use the filters uh, to, to generate focus case. In this case, we're only gonna choose stuff from ore. So we've predefined what ore is. It's it's in pit and it's above cutoff grade. So let's choose ore. Uh, it doesn't have to be an active filter. Just has to be exist as a case. Okay. So now we can choose uh, which drills we want to use. We can either select all uh, or select none, and we can also use filters. So you know you could do things like this. So if, for example, you only wanted to use uh, drilling from 2020, then there might be a way you can filter for that and select all in, in that category. In this case, uh, let's just go ahead and choose all the drill holes because there's not many of them. 
Once we selected these uh, holes, you can see that the dots that were gray have now become uh, orange at the bottom here. So if I just deselect a few, you can see that they, they get gray, go orange if they're selected, and the one that's highlighted is red. Okay, so just a, an easy way to, to visualize and plan view the drill holes that have been selected. And with that, we're done. All we have to do is hit apply and work that used to take a week or two and uh, you know mind-numbing work of trying to go through and choose 30 samples to cover all these different features as you can see it was done in less time than it took me to finish the sentence okay so uh, first of all we've got a table uh, here that shows uh, the stuff uh, shows the 30 samples that were selected on the right here you'll notice that there's this new category here in the metallurgical samples list so you got the drill holes and you got the the metallurgical samples you got the samples, composites, and now proposed samples, okay? And here there's a bit of information here about what was used in order to, to select these 30 uh, samples. We've got the samples 1 through 30, but also within every sample, there's also a couple of alternatives, right? So you can see that here we've got sample 8.1 selected, but there's also 8.2 and 8.3, uh, we've got them down here, uh, that could also be used in place of 8.1. So we can see here the red dot, which is 8.1, is here, but if we wanted to have more samples from over here, we can see the blue dots are over here. We can say, you know what, now let's give me 8.3. I'd prefer that one, and we're gonna use that one instead, okay? Now it's updated all the table, it's updated the plots, the 3Ds, the mini 3Ds to show us where all those 30 samples are. Um, we can see them all there. And we can also look at them from a, 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 a sample uh, versus drill hole mosaic plot uh, contrast, okay? So as you can see, pretty much, you know, that for the gold grade, let's do something a little bit more sensible. Click on the rock type, so we can see the rock type here and the gold grade. As you can see, the proportions here and here are reasonably similar. Let's just look a little further to the right. This one looks okay, okay? Here it should have been 30-30, we've got 47-20, maybe something going on there. 40-40, 40-50, this is all pretty good. Uh, it doesn't seem to, now here in the high iron stuff, there seems to be a deficiency of samples. I'd say, you know, here we've got 27 total in this column, or 20, uh, sorry, 30 total in the high iron and the drilling, and we've only got 10 uh, here. So clearly we've we've got a sub-represented uh, high high iron material. Um, now this is of course interactive with 3D, so if we wanted to look at this in uh, 3D for example, we could, uh, you know, as to bring up the new floating 3D, uh, what do you call that, uh, floating 3D screen and the, and the log screen, uh, and if I was to click on the different samples here, of course we can see them also here, and if we go to the plots, we can see them here. So uh, sure enough, if we look at iron, there is a deficiency in the high iron, but also deficiency in the low iron. And here we can see why iron wasn't high or low. There's intervals that are high, but they're interstitial with intervals that are low. And so a typical sample bridges between the two and no particular sample is either high or low iron. So okay, very reasonable. Individual intervals of one or two meter, sure there might be high iron. But over a, a you know a, a ten meter interval, uh, you don't get that. Okay, so we can see here all the samples in uh, green, the ones that have been proposed, uh, and you can see here that this was okay, but it was off by a couple of meters. You know, uh, might be better just to edit this one, uh, sample twenty five, and bring it here so it's just one alteration type uh, instead of the same one here. Right? It was it was close. No cigar. So we can, it might, those are the sort of things that you might want to edit at the end, uh, just to make sure that they're homogeneous samples. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, there might be samples here, for example, 23, which is a bit of a mixed bag, probably not the best. So let's just go to 23 in the sample representativity, go to 23, sorry, not representative, yeah, sample selection thing, 23. And if we, uh, let's have a look at the, the second option. Yeah, that seems to be more of a, a more homogeneous uh, sample. Maybe we'll go with that one instead. And when we're ready, we just hit here, take the run, okay? Uh, and we're going to either choose a, an existing phase that the samples to or add a new phase, okay? Going to call this phase whatever we want. We'll call this phase one, apply. 
and these are going to go from proposed samples and they're going to reappear here as metallurgical samples okay um and so now they've gone blue and they've been given names bas1 through to bas30 okay so uh those uh those samples can now be used uh you know for things like you know 3d graphs we can uh, sort of different kinds of analysis uh if we want to we can use the uh, lookups uh, which are already populated so we could uh, do it by alteration and we could have uh you know a silver versus uh, cadmium plot for example uh, and there you can see we're using data for those 30 samples that we've got selected we could do the same for uh you know um box plots and things like that so we can play with the data uh from the lookups for samples that we've already selected uh, and of course in 3d now we can uh see these samples as well uh we just have to bring up um let's just bring them from 3d put the a certain thing there and we can play with them like that of course there's no results so you can't do targets and stuff but the samples are selected and you can uh print out uh the sample selection in both logs and in uh summary tables um so you could come here and do a sample representativity report for all uh, for those things and apply and you've got your table you've got your plots 3d mosaic and the info on the back end here about how that was developed so it's all there and uh that's a sample selection now of course you know i always say that you know this is like netflix for geometallurgists it recommends what you might want to use it doesn't force you to use it uh so be, take care and do your due diligence and review what cancha does it's only as good as the data and the things you give it to do okay uh but it certainly uh, reduces all the number crunching and it improves uh interactivity and and transparency and communication in metallurgical sample selection thank you very much